Hello, my name is Adam Winrich, and right here is a whip I just built in about 15 minutes out of rope and athletic tape, some PVC and some ball chain, and I'm going to show you how to make it right now. I've laid out everything you should need to build the instant bull whip. Most all this stuff you should be able to buy at your local hardware store or at your local sporting goods store. So first, for the handle, you need some half inch PVC. Now this is a half inch inside diameter and it's about 13, 16, 7 inch outside diameter and I've cut it to about a foot long. That's PVC for the handle. And a PVC coupling, the, the whip will fit into the end of the handle there, into the coupling. Then to build the core and the fall of the whip, you'll need some 3 16 inch rope, or this is also 5 millimeter nylon braided rope, came in a bundle of 50 feet. For the basic body and to form the taper of the whip, you need a slightly larger diameter rope. This is a 3 8 inch twisted nylon rope, came in a package of 15 feet. To give the whip the weight and the density to make it crack well, you need some ball chain. Now if you can find it for sale on a spool, you buy about 8 feet of it. However, at my local hardware store all I could find was uh, pull chains in the ceiling fan section or you can ask for a ball chain in the form of a pull chain. They come in three foot lengths. Now the longest length you'll need will be five feet to go the full sort of inside length of the whip and so you can take two of those lengths and uh, join them together like that. You also need some electrical tape and then the two items that I bought at the sporting goods store were a spool, so a roll of athletic tape and then some, these are uh, tennis racket grips. You can use one of these grips to put a uh, better grip on the handle than you can get with the athletic tape. And to make a cracker, you'll need some nylon mason's twine. Also to put together the whip, you'll need a few common household tools. You need a measuring tape to measure everything to length. You need a saw to cut the PVC. You need uh, snips to cut the uh, ball chain. You need uh, a scissors to cut the rope. A pencil, we'll use that to form the cracker. And a lighter, we'll need that to fuse the end of the uh, core and fall before we tie on the cracker. So that's everything you should need to build the whip. Now let's lay everything out and cut it all to length. I've gone and cut all my materials to length. First I cut the, uh, the PVC for the handle, that's about a foot long, and then I slapped the coupling there on the end of that. And with the uh, five millimeter rope, braided nylon rope that's going to be the core and the fall, I cut a length 10 feet long. Then with the braided nylon rope, I cut three pieces. The longest one is uh, 54 inches, or about a foot and a half, I mean uh, four and a half feet, and then 40 inches, and then 18 inches. That starts to form a taper, so three pieces there. And then three lengths of ball chain. The longest one is five feet, and then two feet, and then one feet. So now I'm going to tape all these together so I can fasten them to the handle. Now get out your electrical tape and we're going to start by taping together the three pieces of 3 8 inch rope. Now I put all the ends together. Let's get the bit of tape out there. We're going to fasten all these guys together. Let's sort of wrap them around. So we fasten these together first then we'll attach the core. So there. Those are all fastened together. Now I grab my core rope and I'm going to leave about like a couple feet sort of sticking out uh, the end. And I'm going to tape that in place just like that. A couple more wraps there. And then I'm going to tape in the ball chain sort of one at a time. So I'll keep moving around the core rope as I go. So there's one piece of ball chain fastened in there. Lay another piece of ball chain. And tape it in there. And finally, one last piece of ball chain that I'll tape in place. Just like that. And go ahead and give it a few more give a few more wraps around the whole business to make sure it's gonna be solid.
<laughs> pull the tape off, and there. Now all the ball chain and the core is all fastened together. Now I'm ready to attach it to the handle. Okay, now to attach the handle to the body of the whip, you take the couple of feet you let sticking out of the core and put that down into the handle. That down all the way through to the end and pull it through. And now the parts that you tape together, see those are going to fit ah, snug right into the end of the coupling. And you give a little tug on the core on the end to see that, all right, that's firmly in there. Now I'm going to loop, loop the core back around the handle and I'm going to anchor that with some more electrical tape. This way the rest of the whip won't pull out to the pull out of the handle. And I'll use the rest of the rope here that uh, the excess that I let hang out. I'm going to use that to form the basis of the sort of knob or little swell here on the end of the handle so my hand doesn't come sliding off. So to do that, I'm going to sort of zigzag back and forth with that rope and continue taping it up. So see I formed a little zigzag and now I zigzag it back, a bit more tape. I just keep going around all the way, zigzagging all the way around until you've come, gone all the way around the end of the handle. Here's what it looks like once I've finished zigzagging all the way around. And if you have any extra rope at the end, go ahead and just clip that off. Or if you didn't leave enough rope, just grab another piece of your rope and uh, just tape another little bit in so you can make that uh, round all the way. Now before we go to taping the whole outside of the whip, I'm going to trim a few pieces of the twisted rope. Now to help form the taper of the whip a little bit better, what I've done is I've untwisted a bit of my uh, 3 8 inch twisted rope. I uh, twisted about a foot, and then I've gone and uh, sort of cut one strand back, maybe four inches away from the longest one, and then cut the other one a little bit back, so it tapers a little bit better. You can see I've done this with the middle one, and now I'm going to go ahead and do this with the, uh, the shortest one. So I'll leave one of them long, and then I'll cut one back about four inches, like that, cut a piece off, and then cut another one a little bit shorter than that. Now I grab up my handle, I got all my rope, I got everything cut and tapered. Now I want to cover up the end, oops, sorry my finger there, cover up the end right there. So I'm going to take just a couple pieces of athletic tape around here and rip it off. Just like that. Maybe a couple pieces. One going one way, one going the other. Yeah, now I'm ready to start wrapping the handle. Now you can start wrapping the handle first. Let's go around. Now when I'm wrapping, it's a little bit dodgy there, but it'll get neater as I go. As I'm wrapping, I want to make sure that uh, as I wrap each time, that half, half the athletic tape sort of wraps the previous wrapping. That'll put about, uh, that'll double the number of layers with each wrap. So I'll go around and I want half of the old wrap to cover the last one. So I'm going to wrap all the way down to the handle and then I'm going to tie the handle to something or have someone hold it before I try to wrap the thong. Now I've gone and lashed the handle to uh, sort of the side of the deck here. You can lash it to a banister or have someone hold it. The main thing is you don't want the handle to twist while you're trying to wrap all the rope, loose rope and ball chain together with the tape because uh, it'll start to twist in your hands and it'll get all lumpy. You want to be able to hold tension in the rope while you're wrapping it. So I'm going to hold the rope with one hand, kind of hold everything together, then go around with the other hand with my wrapping of electrical tape. Again, letting half the rope overlap, halfway overlap the previous wrapping, then sort of hold it in place with one finger, bring it around again. So now I've wrapped all the way to the end. You can see here is my core. I've covered up all the ball chain and I've covered up any uh, rope that I had from the, uh, the 3 8 inch rope. And now I've wrapped all the way down. I'm going to wrap all the way back. And I'm, you keep wrapping in the same direction, but because you're going back towards the handle, the, uh, the tape actually will be spinning the core in the opposite direction. Now if you only wrapped it down uh, once, 
that means there was the core would still want to twist because the tape put tension on everything. So you wrap back in the opposite direction. This also means that you'll have uh, uh, four hole thicknesses of athletic tape over the whole whip. And yep, so I just keep wrapping all the way back until I get back to the handle. Now you can see I've, uh, I've wrapped all the way back up to the handle and I still have a little bit of athletic tape left. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and put a few extra wrappings right around the transition to help reinforce this area. And then once it looks like I have maybe a foot of duct tape left on the roll, then I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up onto the handle, and then I'll be ready to put on my, uh, my tennis racket grip. Here's what it looks like once I've applied the uh, grip. Now they put instructions uh, on the box of how to apply these grips. Basically you just take it out of the box, uh, unravel it, uh, take the little plastic off, and then wrap it around, and then fasten it on the end with some electrical tape. Uh, here's the very end of the fall. I went ahead and uh, trimmed it. I measured from uh, 24 inches from where the tape ended all the way to the end of the fall. And now I'm going to fuse it, and that's what you need a lighter for. But I'm probably going to try to find a less windy spot so I can actually keep the flame going. What you do is just melt it, and then you get a little ball of uh, melted nylon. Be careful that you don't burn yourself, and then that'll help hold on the cracker. Now we're ready to make the cracker. Now I've caught a, uh, taken my mason, nylon mason's twine and I cut a piece about 33 inches long. Now this is going to make for kind of a, kind of a long, long cracker, but uh, I found uh, it's going to help out the, uh, the flow of this whip and help it flow smoother through the air. So I cut a piece 33 inches long, put a piece underneath my foot, now I grab my pencil and I'm going to wrap just the uh, last couple inches of mason's twine around the pencil, hold it in my left hand. Uh, pinch it so the pencil just stays there and now I'm gonna spin the pencil in the uh, same direction as the twist of the mason's twine try to twist it a little bit tighter than it is so that way once I double back the mason's twine it's gonna spin against itself now be sure to uh, you put the nylon mason's twine underneath your foot to keep the tension on there so it doesn't pop out. Now you can keep twisting it until it gets so tight that uh, you'll see the mason twine start to binding up, start to bind up against itself. I'm not going to go quite that far with this demo model, but now I'll grab it in the center, put end to end, match the, match the two ends up like that. Now I still have my finger there in the, uh, the middle of the twist, and now if I uh, let go, it'll uh, twist up on itself automatically, and then to finish the cracker, I'm just going to tie, tie an overhand knot in the end, leaving myself about uh, three, three inches or so of uh, loose string at the end. Here's the cracker, just a little bit more close up. And now we get to tie it onto the whip. Okay, we're almost done with the 15 minute whip. Now we just have to put the cracker onto the end of the fall. So I'm going to undo a little bit of the twist, did the loop end of the cracker. So I open it up, slide the fall through that, just like there. Now I take the fall and I'm going to loop it back over the top of itself. So see the cracker end? I formed a loop like that, where the, uh, the end of the cracker comes over the top. Now I just bring the cracker up through, up through the bottom, coming up that way. So there, you can see the cracker coming up, up through the bottom. And now I just have to pull that tight. And here's the finished whip. In case you forgot how well it cracks, here's another demo. All 
That's right, here we have the Instant Whip. My name is Adam Winrich. Thanks for watching.